we find this uh, robot character and uh, divide it into the left leg, right leg, and arm part, body part, and uh, the head part. So several pieces there. So it will show the pieces one by one on the screen. So like when it's moving, and if you feel like wanting to stop it at some right position, you just need to tap on the screen. And uh, for the first click, I'm trying to lock the position on the like, X axis, and then I'm trying to put it and lock it. For this template, I know people wanted to know, how can I quickly use this template and making my like our own effect. So here I find this image online and uh, then I separate the layers, separate the ice cream into different parts. So let's try and uh, see how we can quickly replace the assets and make a uh, ice cream effect. Blueprint is actually used as a reference of your object. So what you can do is trying to first replace the, the uh, blueprint image. So we wanted to change it from the robot to this ice cream blueprint. Resize it and uh, like uh, put it as a nice place. And what next? So we were trying to replace the, the robot body pieces uh, with all the ice cream pieces. So as I mentioned, you see here, there is an object called body parts. And uh, we have a suffix that says do not delete, which means do not delete this one. So this one is actually the container to hold all the pieces that you wanted to assemble together. And uh, for the robot, uh, actually there are six pieces. So what you can do is just uh, trying to place the pieces with your assets one by one. So the first is the, the uh, cone, and the next will be like, I think the pink vanilla ice cream ball. And uh, maybe the next one will be the chocolate layer. And the next will be the cherry layer. So now we already have all the uh, pieces together. And actually the part five or six actually are not really in use. So what we can do is that is just to delay them simply and keep the parts that you want it to have. Now you already have a nice ice cream as assemble game now. So for example, you see, it start with this one like moving around and if I type it, so you see by placed the assets, we already have like a nice ice cream assemble game. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. Just need to like place the assets there. But the things we want to improve is you feel like actually the size is not that satisfying because some of the parts are small, some of them are really like a big. So what we can do to polish that would be, so we go to that parts. For example, the first parts will be the cone and uh, we're trying to resize it and trying to matching it on the blueprint. And we do the same thing for the next piece. Quick question. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Let me know in the comments. That's a great question. Favorite one with the chocolate or the vanilla with uh, donuts. You can also select a new trigger that stops the blocks or set how much the block moves, how fast it moves, and at the end, how big the pop-up is. Cool. I have a couple questions from the chat. I think people are inspired by this template. They want to add additional features where you can give it a score for how perfect you do the assembly. That's a really, really great question. That is actually the uh, advanced topic I'm preparing today. Thank oh, you for wow. asking that. A score to evaluate. So it's actually make a comparison between your exact, uh, like a placed position and your desired position. So what is your desired position? So that is original position recorded like when you put on this like uh, body part one. So that's why at the beginning, I always think like uh, trying to move the pieces and trying to match that piece perfectly with the, the blueprint because that will help your piece to find the your designed the target position there. So for example, for this wolf cone, a uh, right position exactly matching the blueprint is actually this number zero and the negative almost like a 180. So how to find your exact position here? So here we have like a reset all pieces of graph and uh, pen it and uh, take a look of this uh, animate object. So this is the, the uh, 
function graph that control each piece's movement. And we can go inside a little bit deeper. Don't get scared about all the graphics there. We are, we are totally cool here. So what things you want to do is trying to find this final destination. So this value is actually the exact position. So just need to send it this out. Input and output are useful features that allows you to sync information and triggers inside and outside of subgraphs. So then you don't need to care about all the other um, nodes in here, just to get outside it. And you see for here, animate object is already have a variable. And actually this variable is your final position of that piece, right? Actually the comparison, you can think it as like calculate the distance between like your original design position and your exact uh, final position there. So for example, for body piece one, trying to make a distance. So if the distance is really short, which means your precision is really high, you should get a high score because it's matching perfectly, right? But if the distance is pretty long, which means you get it offset a lot, this is kind of like uh, uh, the index to evaluate your score there. So what we can do is, so first we can try to create a text and then we can uh, score text and uh, let's add it this text to the component there so okay so now we have a score let me put it a little bit up there and uh, how we can define it so judgment here so if it greater than the threshold maybe uh, 200 or something then it should be totally it means you're really bad at it so we can return it to the zero score. But if it is uh, within that uh, 200, then what we can do is trying to do a remap calculation. The distance is a range like, from zero to 20, then we can map it to score like 100 to zero. A little question for people who haven't used the remap node before. Remap a value from an old range to a new range. So in here, as I mentioned, we want it. So if the distance is zero, which means this two, your desired piece is like exactly at the, the, your desired position, and then you should get like 100 score, right? But if it is a super far away, then it will get like zero score. So here is this calculation. And what we can do is showing this result to this text. So when you connect it, it's all to help you translate, make a, like a data convert from a number type to a string type. So don't worry about that. And okay, so we can do it after we really place that and before it jump to the next motion there. Cool, let's try. So when I move it, cool. You see, actually for the uh, corn, wolf corn piece, I actually got a lot. 84, it's, which means it's pretty close to that position. But for this vanilla, let's try it again. It's zero because it's offset a lot. And uh, for here, I set the threshold to 200, which means if the offset is far away over 200, you will to totally get like a zero, no matter how far it's like. Or if it is greater 200, no matter like 300 or 500, which means you will get like zero for for, for for this um, position for, for playing these pieces. And if it is that the range is within zero to 200, we will still give it a score. But you can definitely change the threshold to like uh, increase the uh, difficult level of your game. For example, if I change this to 100, which means play the offset within 100 will get calculated or otherwise it will all get zero. What if you wanted to calculate it, all the three pieces? That's a, a little bit more difficult. So if we wanted to do, do, to do that, we can first try to create a variable. It could be like our engine position. So I wanted to make it as an array. The type will be vector two, and I wanted to make it as an array because I wanted to record it, all these body pieces, original position. And in here, because we have four, so 
trying to add uh, four variables here. So this will make this array being a length of four. So now we already have this original position array. And the next part, what we want to do is trying to record all these original positions of all the parts there. While Melody is working, I would like to let you guys know that the poll has completely flipped from the Avengers being number one. Now it is ranked at number two, and my favorite and I can't guess is now at number three, which means the Lego is at number one with 48 Shocking. <laughs> let me try to explain what we are doing here. So as Eddie mentioned, a get child thing object with for loop is super powerful. It will help you to like do the same operation for every thing object underneath this parent one. So in here, when we say get children objects, it means like it will get each each like a thing object underneath this one and make it as an array. So the output is making the children uh, thing object as an array. So it will group this. Uh, from part one, part two, part three to part four, it will making a array. And uh, when it connected with for loop, it means for each object inside that array, we're gonna do this operation. And uh, for here, the operation, what we do here is for each item from that array, for example, like uh, the first item in that array is actually body part one. And we got party part one, and we got the thing, the thing, green transfer component here. And then we're trying to get a position number, which is like zero, negative 180. We get this number, and then we get this position number and save it to this orangey position array we created before. So actually for the body part one, we got this position number and save it into our engine position array. And we do the same thing for body part two and save it to our engine position array, the item two, and the, it's the same thing for three, number three and number four. So actually you can see the result here. After we doing this operation, do the for loop, if you checked the results of the original position, if you give a peek of that original position uh, array, you can see the index, which means that the item, first item of that array is actually recording this body part one position number. And uh, for body part two position number, it actually saving to item two. You see it's matching exactly the same. So it's all matching here. So just uh, in summary, for this part of function graphs here, we are trying to catch all the same objects screen position and save that original position into this array. And the array name is orange position. So what do we remember what we're trying to do is record all the position and save them into an array. So the reason why we do that is because we're trying to compile that this body part uh, real-time position with its original position. So actually this one, if you like a ping this number, it's actually changing in real time. So that's why we needed to record it, this number at the beginning at a standards. So next go back to here. Since we already get that array to record the orientation, so we can just uh, get the variable of this original position. And uh, we can get the item here. And uh, the index will be here. And just the connecting in here. So now, uh, so by doing this, it will actually like, calculating like a body part a score one by one with the compile it within the exact part one position with the, the original part one position. And for part two, it will also calculate the uh, real time part two position with the original desired part two position. So for example, here, you can check the data here. So now we are actually jumping to this uh, part two, it's the vanilla ball. And the desired position is zero and the 98, right? So you see it's actually comparing this like a position number with 
0.098. And now it jumps into this chocolate piece. And the chocolate piece, the desired position is 0 and 20, 234. So you can see for this uh, input B, is actually jumping to this like, desired uh, position of this chocolate piece. So I think that's that's about how to how to calculate the, the score there. And in here, I just show how could you evaluate it, the score like piece by piece. And you can do a further calculation. For example, like gather to added all this score together and make an average score or something. Thank you again for an amazing tutorial. And guys, don't forget to comment what your favorite ice cream flavor is. We will see you again. Thank you guys. Bye.